Black Supremacy is Nessie Sissia. Go on ahead and head over to King Noble Higher Self if you want to see a clip about this video that I'm also about to show you here. But I want to talk about the incident that occurred with the two men who were arrested at the Starbucks. So this is a video of them being arrested. And as you can see, they are not... You know, they're, they're really not doing anything wrong. They were just sitting at the Starbucks waiting for this white man here. As you can see, they are a real estate. They are two real estate, um, I guess, agents or brokers. And they're waiting for, you know, a, a third party real estate agent or broker. And as you can see, they are being escorted out of the bathroom. Sorry, out of the restaurant for simply wanting to use the restroom while black. So at first, you know, I heard the police chief's response to this and he basically said that the employees asked him to leave and they didn't leave. And when the police got there to, and asked him to leave that they didn't leave. And, you know, when you are at an establishment, a lot of times it's up to the manager on duty or on staff basically to make the call of, you know, how they want to run the business at that point in time. So in this instance, there was a racist, you know, white supremacist woman who was supposed to be the manager and she so happened to be the one to call the police on them and I, I think a lot of black people don't realize that if an employee does ask you to leave that pretty much the next step is going to be to call the police so you got to make a quick judgment call as to whether or not you want to basically stand your ground and um carry this out further or you know whether you just basically want to leave and come back again um i think in this case this definitely reminds me of the whole Rosa Park incident. But before that, I want you to hear what this police chief has to say. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Commissioner Richard Ross. I'm from the Philadelphia Police Department. I know there is a lot of concern and a lot of attention uh, being uh, spread around an incident that happened here in Philadelphia at Starbucks. At 1801 uh, Spruce Streets. And on Thursday at about 4.40, uh, police received a 911 call for a disturbance and trespass. Well, let me have those front seats. When the police arrived, uh, they were met by Starbucks employees who said that two males were trespassing and had refused to leave the establishment. Y'all better make a ladder on yourselves and let me have those seats. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. According to employees, uh, they had seen these two males come in, they sat down, and after being seated, they decided that they needed to use the restroom. Uh, Starbucks said that according to their company policy, they do not allow non-paying uh, members or non-paying uh, people of the public to come in and, and use the restroom. And so they then asked these two males to leave. These two males refused to leave, uh, and the police were called. Now, when the police were summoned to the scene, uh, they get there and they get this story that I just began to outline. Uh, they then approach the males. They ask the males to leave because they're being uh, asked to leave by Starbucks uh, employees. Uh, in fact, in an effort to quell the situation, officers actually called for a supervisor so that it would not get out of hand, something that was a good decision. Listen, I got a, I got a colored woman on my bus in violation of the law. Did you order, Jim? Yes, sir, I warned her. Well, then you just do it. You got to exercise your powers and put her off. All right, man, I'm going to need police back up.
was they were being asked to leave by employees because they were trespassing. Instead, the males continued to refuse as they had told the employees previously. Are you gonna move? No. And they told the officers that they were not leaving. When the call was initially made, the Starbucks employees had told the uh, males that they were gonna call police and they said, go ahead and call police, we don't care. If you don't give me that seat, I'm gonna have you arrested. You may do that. So police get there and they're confronted by the same type of attitude and repeatedly are told that they're not leaving. In fact, there's some alleged rhetoric about you don't know what you're doing, you're only a $45,000 a year employee or something to that regard. Grandpa, I think I hate white people. The only thing you need to remember is that you're as good as anybody else. White, black, or green with stripes. Don't ever be afraid of what can happen to you. If you're fighting for what's right, as long as you keep that with you, then the heat will be a word for other people. And so because these individuals refused to leave because Starbucks actually called. The police did not just happen upon this event. They did not just walk into Starbucks to get coffee. They were called there for a service, and that service had to do with following a disturbance, a disturbance that had to do with trespassing. I want her arrested. So I need to underscore the fact that these males were arrested. When they were arrested, they were taken out essentially without incident. There was no harm done to them. But after being transported to the police district in the area, uh, the officers, after processing paperwork, discovered that Starbucks no longer was interested in prosecuting. And so at that point, those males were released from custody. It is important to emphasize and underscore that these officers had legal standing to make this arrest. Again, they were called to the scene because employees said they were trespassing. Well, she's sitting in the comment section. It is important for me to say that, in short, these officers did absolutely nothing wrong. They followed policy. They did what they were supposed to do. They were professional in all their dealings with these gentlemen, and instead, they got the opposite back. I will say that as an African-American man, I am very aware of implicit bias. We are committed to fair and unbiased policing, and anything less than that will not be tolerated in this department. Why won't you stand up? I just want to share that here we get Im implicit bias training for all our commanders. And we push that training down to our officers because it's very, very important. In addition, we send all our new recruits to the African American Museum, as well as the Holocaust Museum down in Washington, DC. We do this because we want people, our officers, our recruits to understand the minute they, they come on board, uh, we want them to know about the atrocities that were in fact committed by uh, policing around the world. This is important to us. Why do you all push us around? Will you listen to that? The law is the law. Lady, you're under arrest. But it also, this case also underscores the need for us to continue and expand our body one camera program. Well, let me have those front seats. Currently, we have about 700 officers equipped. Unfortunately, these officers did not have one. But it, it emphasizes why these things are important because you get to tell another side of the story. We are a department that's always looking to enhance and improve upon ways that we do things. And in cases like this, we will examine this one and similar ones to see if there are things that we can do better. Well, she's sitting in the comment section. Uh, we have not determined that as of yet, but we will continue to look into this incident as we go forward. But it's something else that I want to, to highlight, and, and let me be very clear. I own no stock in Starbucks. I just happen not to even ever frequent Starbucks, but I can tell you that there was a case involving one of our sergeants probably a couple years ago, who went to Starbucks in full uniform, and he was also denied access 
to the restroom. So they are at least consistent in their policy. Again, I'm not supporting Starbucks. That is not my aim, only to tell the truth about what I know. The law is the law. So it is important, I felt, for all my words about this incident to be expressed so that they would not be edited. Will you listen to that? And so you can make your own value judgments based on what you have heard. But I can tell you candidly again that these officers did absolutely nothing wrong. The law is the law. And that they did a service that they were called to do. And if you think about it logically, that if a business calls and they say that someone is here that I no longer wish to be in my business, they now have a legal obligation to carry out their duties. And they do just that. We will continue to work for it. There will likely be a press conference about this in the future. I just thought that it was very important that we get out some facts that I did not believe were being put out. Right now. I need and so seat. I know this she will continue live. to generate, you know, a, a lot of social media uh, interest, but it is important that you I hear that from me. Right. It's important that uh, citizens of uh, the Did city and around the country, for that matter, hear that from me as well as our police officers. Right. So you will hear more from us in the near future, but I just thank you for the taking law. the time to listen to a side of the story that Wait we wanted to share. A side of the story that we wanted to share. The side of the story that we wanted to share. The side of the story that we wanted to share. The side of the story that we wanted to share. So you basically heard him confirm what I told you is that, you know, it's really up to the manager, you know, and there are no human rights police. These police are simply here to protect these businesses and these white people who are afraid of you. So here's a few of the um, tweets from Twitter that you can go ahead and take a look at right now. Always saying, you know, we don't want solutions, but it's like, we're going to have to come to a point where we make a tough decision whether we want a solution or not. And one of them is to pretty much make your own coffee at home. You can see here how easy it is. All you need is a Nutribullet and some coffee. And I actually would suggest that black women avoid coffee, especially if you're a black woman. Black men, it can actually help you. But for black women, in the terms of fertility, it actually decreases your fertility. It, it encourages more miscarriages. Drinking more than just 500 milligrams delays pregnancy, thereby causing infertility. Coffee encourages birth defects, inhibits egg flow, blocks minerals and vitamins, actually prevents egg implantation and causes addiction, too much sugar and too much caffeine consumption. What you can do is you can go online and you can search for black owned coffee shops. If you want to definitely drink coffee as a male, in this case, they were men, right? But stop going to these places who basically you know, it's left up to the manager whether they want to be discriminatory or not, whether they are racist or not. There are several black owned coffee shop businesses all over America. Starbucks is not the only coffee shop. So you have options. You do not have to settle for less. That's not to say that you cannot be discriminated against by these bougie black business entrepreneurs, but at least you stand a chance of at least being able to use the bathroom while black. And I've been to parks. I've been to restaurants all type of different places where i've been discriminated we've been discriminated against simply because we're black and the white people there did not want us they wanted to have a nigga free event or outing and they used the police to do so so nothing has changed in all the years that black people have been struggling and fighting for freedom since the days of rosa parks and even before that up until now in this case the ceo of starbucks has basically apologized to the two brothers and basically wants to meet them face to face but it's really a little bit too late too latte what about all the black brothers and sisters who weren't real estate agents, who weren't waiting for a white man, who did order a coffee and were paying customers and still got kicked out, still got the police called on and escorted out. Some of them got beat, some of them murdered. This incidence of white people calling the police on black people simply because they're black people while other white people get to do the very exact same thing, it needs to be exposed and it needs to be called out. Although that doesn't guarantee anything is going to change. But the system has to be bucked and it has to be bucked by people who can do it. People who are able to, you know, who can get the spotlight and get the attention on them and get people to wake up and realize so these black people and these white people can stop acting so damn clueless and we can make the separation that we need to. But we need the awareness like this because there are black people who are asleep, immigrants that are black that don't believe that there's any racism. They really think that Americans is just whining and complaining and bitching and moaning when this shit is real. And it won't be until some of you lose your 
you know, foreign accent and you have children who become second generation Americans, that you will realize that, you know, the, the amount of racism that goes on here. So, you know, people definitely have to stand up and, and, and take a stand against these injustices and make the separation that needs to be made. Build the black businesses that need to be met and have your meetings and your, your real estate meetings in them. Y'all need coffee. I'll be right here.